Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here, sat in the garage. I hope you had a really great um, festive season and New Year break and uh, you're back into the swim of things. End of the first week back is always a bit of a shock to the system and uh, January seems to be an awfully long month. But uh, anyway, uh, all going in the right direction. Happy New Year to those that haven't said Happy New Year to you uh, already. And um, yeah, so this week, largely driven by the a uh, trip out that we had on New Year's Day uh, a week ago, uh, where we went down to a place called Sturminster Newton down in Dorset, uh, where they had a kind of New Year's Day gathering and meet and a bit of a drive round afterwards, which was great fun to do. I hadn't been out in the stag for a little while because the weather's been so rubbish. So it was good to get out and about and uh, enjoy the car, give it a good run. It's about an hour west from here, so uh, a good, good run out. Uh, the only issue I had was with the windscreen wipers. And uh, while my problem is specific to inside the car with the uh, steering wheel, the hub stalk itself playing up, it's a bit of an electronic issue I think I'm going to have to try and resolve, uh, which I'll do in a separate film I'm sure. Um, I just thought I'd give you the insight is to, into the actual uh, um, wiper mechanism itself because I thought it'd be quite useful for, for people to understand. It's something I discovered as we pulled UNY49M apart back in the day and I know it's a little while ago but behind me on the bench we've got the windscreen wiper uh, mechanisms and I just want to talk you through how they work. Uh, a lot of people will know about this already I'm sure but nevertheless it's um, I think it's interesting and if you understand about it then perhaps that helps you uh, run your own car or understand what needs to be done to fix it uh, should things need fixing underneath the uh, the bonnet there. Okay let's go to the bench and I'll just talk you through. Okay so I've come back to the bench and um, laid out the um, windscreen wiper mechanisms uh, in uh, hopefully a logical order. If you imagine you're inside your stag and this is with a right hand drive car obviously uh, and looking over the top of your windscreen and down onto the bonnet the front of the car going off this way then this is how it would typically be configured. You have your power coming in from here, which is the um, uh, windscreen wiper motor, which is on the near side at the top of your um, engine bay underneath the stag bonnet. And then you've got your uh, kind of passenger side windscreen wiper here, and then your main driver's windscreen wiper here, which has just fallen off, um, which is known as a pantograph. And it's called a pantograph because there are two legs to it really, and this end um, moves to accommodate the windscreen and the, and the sweep of the blade. And the blade obviously goes in through here. I'll come back to the driver's uh, side in just a second. It's quite an interesting little setup. Had me confused .com for a little while. Uh, in terms of how to change a wiper blade the other month but it is quite straightforward when you know <laughs> and therein is the issue. Now for those of you who are very very observant you'll notice these splines on the top here are the bits that hold the inside of the windscreen wiper uh, kind of driver blade if, if you like yourself. You can just see in there there are lots of splines into which this obviously slides in. So you've got kind of male splines, just get it into focus, sorry, and uh, a female in there. So obviously that's that's how they fit. And they literally are just a push fit. So that's the first thing that I found uh, interesting to know because I was looking for a screw or some kind of bolt or, or locking mechanism that these windscreen wipers uh, go on to. Not at all. Um, all you do is just find the right spot and slide them on. Um, takes a bit of pushing and uh, obviously if they're corroded and whatever, it might take a bit of uh, a little bit of lubricant or whatever but um, and if you're pulling them off they can get stuck a little bit but stay with it keep an even kind of force either side and that will release and come off of the spline obviously this is um, behind the, the the actual bonnet um, underneath your um, windscreen okay so come across here now for those of you as I just said who are really observant you'll notice on this one this is the one that came off UNY 49M whenever it did a few years back someone at some point has tried to be clever and drill a hole here and fit a screw to try and clamp it to the spline and obviously it, it, I guess it would have worked at one point but um so that looks to be a bit of a bodge to me um because that's certainly not on my UES 591S car although this was an early 1973 car so I may uh, beg to differ but looking at the rustiness of that that looks like a bit of a bodge to me 
and uh, so there you go. So that's the first thing, that's how they fit on. They've got splines at the top of each of these uh, pillars or posts, the drivers if you want to call them that, and um, that's how they fix and they obviously sweep, as we all know, across the windscreen, all being well when your electrics work, as mine don't. But, uh, well, they do, but they're not that efficient. So that's the layout. Again, remember, we're looking down over the top of the windscreen from inside the car with the bonnet going that way. That's near side, that's off side. Obviously, left-hand drive cars, perhaps in the US, then the, the, the situation will be reversed. Okay, um, just wanted to show you how the um, windscreen wipers get their drive. I've got everything laid out there, as I said before. If we come round to this end, this is the bit that uh, is driven from the wiper motor, and that's actually nestling top left-hand side as you're looking towards the front of the car um, of the engine bay, and um, drives this kind of helicoil wire, I suppose you call it. If you look really closely, you can see it's actually almost like a spring. It's a concentric kind of wire effect, so a helicoil all the way around there. And um, the actual wiper motor itself um, has a pin on a disc, basically, that hooks into here. And how this works very cleverly is by this moving in and out. So it's a fore and aft uh, kind of um, movement driven by the wheel that's going around here. Well, if you imagine that's on a peg, going around. So what that does then is make that turn um, one way and then the other to get the windscreen wiper effect that we all know and love when they're working. Now I'll just uh, mount the camera on the little stand and just show you how this actually works in reality. All right so I've got it on the uh, in the bench so if you imagine that's that's held in position here and the driver of the motor is going around here um, effectively without getting my hands all covered in grease. If you imagine this pulls one way, that way, and then pushes that way, the other way, um, which is obviously pushing, I'm having to put quite a bit of pressure on this. Obviously it's all bolted in, it's a lot more stable than this, but that's, that's the movement. So it's literally going backwards and forwards that way in and out of the car uh, channels uh, there. So that's how it works, driven by your windscreen wiper, obviously a lot quicker when it's actually in situ and wiping the screen. Now, if I just show you the reaction over here, if I just switch the camera around if I can, um, and as I'm doing that off camera, you'll begin to see the uh, pillar actually start to move. Can you see that? So that's, that's your rotation, and that's how the windscreen wipers work. You can just see the pillars there, those splines I talked about earlier on, rotating backwards and forwards. Obviously, it's a lot quicker in the situ, when it's in the car and it's raining, but that is the fore and aft movement. So clever, huh? Okay, so I hope that explains how the uh, the fore and aft movement goes. Obviously it doesn't go anywhere. At the very end, you have um, a dead end and all that um, wire is doing is moving backwards and forwards, tracking backwards and forwards as I've just shown you. And um, we'll go and have a look inside one of these um, spindles in just a second, just to see what, uh, how that actually engages with it and uh, that'll be good but um, let's um, see how that looks inside and um, and then we'll come back to the uh, the pantograph uh, driver's side windscreen wiper in due course because that's kind of worthy of a bit of a chat um, but there we go so let's um, let's open it up now and have a look right so here's the um, mechanism from the underside uh, these are the kind of sleeves I uh, was uh, talking about earlier on and um, very simply the nuts just come off the studs at the back of the pillar here to reveal a bit of a moulded piece of metal, which is kind of keeping it all together. If I take that away, um, just simply reveals what you can see here, which is essentially a cog, uh, which then drives the spindle, which I'll just remind you is up over here. So that's the base of the spindle. Um, and this, as this track comes backwards and forwards, is rotating the cog. I'll see if I can do it off camera. There's a bit of a bit of an effort but there you go so there you go so that's what I was doing earlier on Whoop. <laughs> and you can see there actually um, the reason why that um, little cog is there or the big pardon that uh, metal plate is there is because these sleeves here are actually a bit like um, a kind of brake copper a flared at the end and um, that clamp actually holds those sleeves in so what's happened there is just pulled out because obviously it can move but you can see that then reveals the whole Kind of a track if you like underneath so those little flares are held in by this plate 
and uh, when it's bolted together. So that's really good. And actually, in fact, if you want to, you can um, go to the other end and start literally pulling it all off if you wanted. So unbolt the other end, the other little spindle, and start pay taking all the sleeves off. So the whole lot will come out um, to help you either repair or replace or whatever if you want to. Now, a couple of points of uh, uh, feedback have been from the uh, Arida Stag community is that A, these cogs can get quite worn. Um, so a little trick, if you want, is to actually uh, rotate that cog by 180 degrees. So if yours is knackered, you can literally um, take this track out, turn the spindle around, and then make it um, this side rather than this side that engages with the track. So that gives you a bit of extra longer life rather than trying to have to replace it. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is this all fills up with the metal filings and tends to gather water so very important to keep greasing it and making sure it's all clear so if you do replace this uh, on your car and you do do the job then it's probably worth taking all the bits cleaning it all off and then re-greasing as is appropriate and um, that's um, yeah very simple kind of idea really <laughs> quite um, impressed with the uh, mechanics of all this it's very very straightforward and uh, I think um, yeah it's um, interesting just to know how this actually works in reality and obviously here you have the uh, uh, kind of um, bodywork here and that's the bit that you see on the front of the car with the um, locking up there just to hold the, the thing in tight but uh, that's where your windscreen wiper goes on the top so all good okay well I'll put this back now um, off camera and uh, we'll go back now and just have a look at the uh, pentagraph and the driver's wiper blade I promised you and uh, go from there all right, so um, before we get to the driver's one, I'm just looking at the, um, the passenger uh, wiper blade itself and the, um, the actual arm. Um, here, to change the wiper blade is actually very straightforward. Um, as with most modern cars, there's a little tang that you can see there. All you need to do is kind of pull that back uh, and the wiper blade will be, he says, confident doing this in real time. Yes, just went off camera and back again there. Um, so you can see that tank comes up as well. What you've got to try and do is get that little pip out of that hole there. So I uh, can't do it because I've got the camera, but literally you can see that that then removes away from the arm itself. Um, and uh, all you've got to do is just drop that and pull out. So simple stuff, um, but if you don't know it, you don't know it. And that now hopefully will uh, will pull out. If I just give it a grab, bear with me. Right, we have success. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just try and do this with um, one hand and a camera. It's not that easy. So, uh, so there you go. So that's uh, that's the passenger side, nice and easy, um, if you have both hands available. And you can see that uh, has got a little tang on the top there that uh, retains it and holds it in. All good and simple and easily um, replaced, which we can do later on. Now. That's the passenger side. So moving on to the driver's side then, and this is where the um, it gets quite interesting. This is quite a clever bit of kit here. This is the, it's known as a pantograph, uh, the wiper arm, and uh, on UK cars, obviously on the off side, and uh, consists of a, this is where the thing hits the, uh, the pillar on there, and that's fine, that's your driver, and how the uh, wiper blade moves backwards and forwards. Here is uh, another kind of arm that's attached to it, which is a very clever piece of engineering, I think. Uh, simple, but very effective. It's a, attached to a plate right next door to your um, windscreen wiper on the outside of the car. So that uh, literally just screws in, clips in to a fixed position on the kind of front of the windscreen. Uh, you can scuttle if you like on the top. And as the uh, wiper blade moves backwards and forwards, then clearly that um, moves the angle backwards and forwards. Uh, and the attack of the angle of the blade on on the actual wiper arm itself, which is very clever. Now, the bit that threw me in the early days of owning UNY49M and also uh, UES 591S was this little chap here. Um, if you look very carefully, as it has different from the passenger side, which we just had that little tang which we've taken out and I've shown you, which is a bit of fiddle, but we did it. Uh, this has got a a, a cam tab, I can only describe it actually on the on this part of the arm, to which the wiper blade then fits. And I pointed out there's a bit of a uh, kind of almost like a nail top here 
with a bit of a slot underneath. And now that has to go into that hole. So if I just uh, put that onto there, again, single-handedly doing this, let's get it on. You can see, ah, there you go. So that's nice and neat, that's in and that's fine. And the design of this is such that that cam then should rotate back. I can't do it with my fingers because I'll need a bit of a screw. Oh, I can. Oh, I can, actually. So can you just see that that's actually now locked into that slot on top of the wiper? And now that's that's holding it. It's held in. And uh, this one's been a bit bent. But if you come around to the top, you just see that that tang itself should just clip into a little bit of a bobble on the back of that, that wiper arm itself there to hold it in. Uh, but I couldn't work out how on earth to change a wiper blade. It sounds such a simple little thing, doesn't it? That's why Halfers make so much money, I'm sure, <laughs> on modern cars. But now you can see how that movement of that fixed arm is changing the attack angle of the windscreen wiper. And that's uh, very, very clever. I think I used to have a Mercedes many years ago with a similar thing with a windscreen wiper actually on the middle of the windscreen. And it's, uh, to, to see the pattern of the white was, was quite interesting to say the least. It was not um, just a, a kind of semicircle. But, um, hopefully that's just helped you. And if you're trying to work out how to get your windscreen wiper off, hopefully that's given you a clue. Um, you might just need to, as I did, stick a wind, uh, little screwdriver there to pop the tab back a bit. But obviously you need to bend it back so when you put it back in, it'll clip back onto that, that, that unit there. So there we are. That's it. All right, guys. Well, um, one of those things, isn't it, really? And uh, people might think I'm a bit stupid and a bit thick. Um, I don't care, frankly. Uh, it's stuff that we don't know. And if we don't know it, we don't know it. So um, this was something I didn't know about, but I found out about it. So uh, thought I'd share it at least for those that uh, might find it useful and uh, can uh, short circuit some time when they're doing their cars. Um, and uh, yeah, I just love engineering and seeing how these things work and uh, just uh, getting into the weeds of the, the actual rail and the mechanisms and how things work, uh, I think is uh, quite insightful. So I hope you found that interesting as well. Good, okay, well that's about it for this week, guys. Um, hope you're staying safe wherever you are in the world and uh, feel free to uh, to check in with us. Uh, always happy to receive lots of thumbs up and lovely comments. Uh, don't forget to join us on a weekend. We've got the uh, thing called Saturday Sockets. It's uh, off-camera shenanigans, an email basically we do every week that I know lots of you love and enjoy and contribute to as well. And uh, I'd encourage more of that, please. If you've got photographs or stories of daring do and uh, exciting breakdowns you've had in the past, all sorts of stories get featured, then please feel free to uh, get in touch. Go to our website and just um, hook up with us that way and uh, sign up and that'd be good. And of course, the Ari the Stag badge of honour. I think you can see one behind me on the wall there uh, going out worldwide free of charge anywhere in the world. If you want one, just get in touch uh, and uh, again on the website and we'll send you one uh, free of charge anywhere in the world. So got to be good, isn't it? Excellent. OK, well, uh, as I say, that's about it for this week, guys. Uh, please feel free to like, share and subscribe as ever. And uh, we'll see you online on Harry the Stag. You got it very soon. <laughs> Cheers for now. Have a great week. Bye.